little bit closer. There we go. Hello. Happy Sunday. Oh, what are we doing today? Um, well, stream title gives it away. <laughs> Gonna be working on more infrastructure as code. Um, with Pulumi. You think, as interesting it is uh, as it was last week to try out local stack, uh, I don't really want to shell out like 400 bucks. So, um, instead we're just going to go without it. And, um, yeah, so I think we're going to try using Pulumi to deploy what we built last week, which was, uh, uh, this uh, thing that runs a step function, a very simple step function when a file is uploaded to S3. And one of the things that I want to do as part of this is uh, use existing uh, S3 bucket. <laughs> Fingers are confused about where the keys are uh, um, for uh, resource. So this was something I, I was looking into that you can, if you already have stuff in AWS, like I have an S3 bucket where I'm storing uh, the local recordings, not so local anymore, but the recordings that I'm, I'm making locally, I'm uploading to S3. Uh, and, uh, save in video archive, there we go. They're organized by by date. There we go. So like the most recent videos from from Friday, we got uh, 10, three, four, five, yeah, 10, 10 uh, video files. Most of them are almost six gigs each. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so we have this bucket. And what I want to do is I want this bucket to be the bucket that I'm referring to here as my bucket. Also, we're going to rename this. Um, we're going to call this video archive. There we go. That's not going to link it to this, this bucket. Um, but we're going to figure out how to do that. I think I need to go reread the docs. So we're going to do that. Um, we're going to get this deployed into my, uh, account that I have here in, uh, in us West two, which is the Oregon region. Uh, and then after we do that, there, there was some stuff I think we started working on last week around Twitch authentication and being able to call an API. We're going to come back to that. Thinking about this, um, that's what I really want to focus on right now is functionality for the beginning of the processing pipeline. So there's some other stuff I want the overall project Fluming Telegram, which I've been working on this year, to do. Uh, a bunch of things I wanted to do, some things that it does now, and some things that I would like it to do in the future. In the bucket of things it does now is allowing me to uh, transcribe videos and do silence detection and other kind of analysis on the video and audio. In the bucket of things I wanted uh, and still want glowing telegram to do in the future is to do um, like integration to Twitch to help me like auto populate tags and stream titles and those sorts of things as I'm getting ready to go live. Um, so I want to focus on the first bucket um, because we have existing code. So then this activity becomes learning Pulumi and taking some of the existing code and getting it deployed. Uh, and so that's, I think, what I want to focus on first. And then, um, so let's move that up to, there we go. And then, uh, and then after that, we can uh, circle back to some forward looking things. I did, um, since the break, since the last coding stream, I should say, I started working on a, uh, uh, a, a component resource called Twitch API credential. And the idea is this is a, a resource that will um, manage the process of doing OAuth, specifically even further forward looking, right? In, in, the, in a scenario where the, this is a, um, 
uh, where we might have multiple things or, or where this could be like multi-tenant. So you have multiple users, right? And so different users would need to be able to do uh, OAuth and have separate OAuth uh, access and refresh tokens that it would be managed by uh, the application. And so kind of just sketching out how we're managing that with uh, uh, AWS uh, key management uh, service. Uh, the S is always service, isn't it? Uh, and secret, <clears throat> excuse me, secrets manager um, and different um, uh, identity and access management policy stuff and some lambdas and API gateways. So this is all stuff that uh, I will come back to, uh, but I want to kind of focus on the beginning of, of what I'm trying to do. And more generally, right? So today in Glowing Telegram, uh, which I think is still running locally. That's funny. Uh, there we go. So locally, you know, when I ingest the a stream, right? And I go find its video files, right? So we have video clips here, or I would have video clips if I click scan. Um, ooh, they don't exist. Not about. About one that has video clips. Here we go. Um, ooh, this, this got kind of messed up at some point. Maybe the last time I updated React Admin? Well, UI's busted. <laughs> Good thing I'm not working on this today. Anyway, the point being that the process today is that like I come in and I create the stream record or I import it from Twitch and then I load the video clips that are the local recording and then I can go over to transcript and I can trigger a task to do the transcription. I can trigger a task to do the silence detection. Um, and so these things that really should happen to every single video file um, only happen when I go and manually trigger them for the stream record, um, especially for like the silence detection. We don't, I don't, I don't need to know about the relationship between the different video files to do silence detection on each one. A thing that I also want to do as part of this process is to make uh, keyframes of the video for like a preview um, throughout like a timeline. And so those are the sorts of things where I just need each individual raw video file. So like each of these files as they come in to be processed. So um, where am I going with this? Right. So instead of making something where I have to go and manually do several steps, uh, what I want to drive towards is, hey, when I am finished with the stream, I might just have a little utility uh, like a little uploader that uploads the files to S3. Maybe I make like an extension for OBS that automatically does this, that syncs it to S3 or, uh, you know, some solution. I'm not too worried about that at this point, but I, you know, I upload them to S3 um, and like I'm doing now, essentially, except that what will happen is, is automatically each of these video files is going to get processed uh, using AWS Batch and uh, those tasks will just automatically happen. And the resulting uh, metadata and thumbnails get stored, right? So that's that's the goal uh, here. Uh, so yeah, AWS Batch with FFmpeg for audio extraction and keyframes, FF Probe for metadata. And the idea would be that um, we would probably store the metadata, so like video file metadata um, in DynamoDB and store silence detection information in DynamoDB. And um, we probably make a separate S3 bucket for the thumbnails, the keyframes, and we can put the path to where those are in DynamoDB as well. So that's kind of what I'm thinking for that um, here. So that's a lot of talking of like what I want to do. And maybe we can do all that today. But first, I need to figure out where we're at in terms of using Lumi 
and uh, local stack. Uh, what's in my history? So instead of using Pulumi local, which was the command line thing for uh, using Pulumi with local stack, I just want to use Pulumi. And I suspect I'm going to need to create, let's, let's go full here. Let me, microphone is really in my face. Let's just kind of shift <laughs> that back. Uh, so we have a Pulumi dot local stack dev ls dev, right? And so this is this config with uh, endpoints. Okay. And then we have a Pulumi dot yaml. Uh, okay. So think about this. Uh, let's see. So first, first of all, let me do is let me, let me make sure I, that my current local credentials default to the right account. So uh, uh, AWS S3 LS, oops, LS. Uh, okay. So AWS access key ID that you provided does not exist in our records. Okay, this is where, <laughs> let me go uh, on a different screen, go check out what my current situation is with my credentials. Uh, that is something I definitely don't want to show on stream. Let's see, ls, yeah, yes, credentials. I have a profile called Glowing Telegram. Interesting. Okay, let's try using that profile. Telegram. Okay, use your video processing tool. Uh, it's not authorized to perform list all my buckets. That makes sense. Okay, so this is the profile that I created specifically for the command line tool that I made at some point. It's just, I think it's just a PowerShell script that uh, uploads uh, the local recording video files. I think that's what that is. Um, let's see, I should be able to go into AWS and look at my list of users without showing anything super secret on stream. Okay. Interesting. So here is the user in question. And can I inactivate keys? No. I, I should. Security credentials. Access key. Uh, inactive. Good. That's the I course. Security credentials. Access key. Inactive. Good. S3 access. What was this for? Security credentials inactive. Good. Okay. Uh, I can probably just delete these users. Last use 1,915 days ago. All right. Cool. Uh, okay. And this is this is what policy this user has, um, which is just to be able to upload, and that's probably what I want. So I think what I want to do is I'm going to create another user uh, for the purposes of um, provisioning resources and stuff from uh, Pulumi. Um, do I want to do this this way? Yeah. Okay. So we'll do uh, Pulumi deploy. 
it doesn't need console access. And uh, we don't have a user group. So we're just going to attach policies directly and it's going to be administrator access, which is just going to be allow star star. It could be more narrow. And generally, like if you know exactly <laughs> uh, in a, in a, in a production environment, you know, it, it should be narrowed. Um, but because this is, this is prototyping and testing things out. And this is an account that I, uh, keep an eye on what the bill is <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm using for development purposes. This will be fine. Uh, and we'll create that user and then we're going to create a security credential and like this for command line interface. Yes, you could use cloud shell. Um, we could use the AWS CLI to and enable authentication through uh, the uh, center, but uh, that's not what we're about right now. Description tag for uh, local use uh, by, by Pulumi. Only I could type Pulumi. All right, and I'm not gonna click this. Actually, I'm gonna move this off screen. Uh, and edit my credentials file. Okay. And we call this Fluent Telegram Admin. Paste means that you won't even see me typing anything secret. And copy, paste, save. Uh, I probably also want to update my config file in, dot, in my .adbs folder. Um, to also add that and set the region to US West 2. And the account ID. Now, I suspect this is not going to help me because, um, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the VS code that I opened just now on the other screen is not inside of the WSL, which I'm just noticing because it's a PowerShell terminal. Uh, <laughs> and this one is inside of WSL. So that's not going to have the same, uh, not AWS folder. Great. So I'll just do that again. Do that all again. File new window. Open recent. Something inside of WSL. Move that over. Super. Just bear with me a moment. So yeah, so if I if I try to do this, if I try to use the new profile over here, oh, that's a typo. Uh, that profile. Oh, that did work. Okay. Well, never mind. Uh, I guess the AWS folder uh, was the right thing. Okay. So now you can see all my all my random buckets from various things, like from, from Let Them Dare, uh, Only Shares That Live, various old things. Um, Very old things. Okay. Anyway, so we're we're mainly dealing with uh, CPM Video Archive here. Okay. So we have a credential. <laughs> uh, so how do we how do we Pulumi? Now let's look at help again. Okay. So a stack is a named update target, and a single project may have many of them. Right, so we have one for our local stack that we're probably not going to use. Um, and then we're gonna have another stack that is gonna be representing us deploying to this AWS account. Um, it seems to me that in practice, what you would do is you would have uh, stacks for different environments. Like if you have a test environment and a production environment, or if you have 
various <laughs> levels of that, you might have different Palumi stacks for that. So, um, create an empty stack with a given name ready for updates is init. Okay, so Palumi stack init help. Is this gonna create a stack called help? Yep, it created a stack called help. Well, and how do you delete the stack? <laughs> uh, RM. Cool. This will permanently remove the help stack. Please confirm this is what you like to do by typing help. Help. Help me. Uh, all right. So we want to call this uh, dev. So did that create another YAML file? It didn't. Interesting. Um, okay, so if we do stack ls. Okay, so we have ls dev and we have dev. Star, I think, indicates that this is the currently selected thing. Um, Secrets provider export graph history import init ls output rename rm select tag and select. Yeah. So let's take a look at what other top level commands Pulumi has. Ah, Pulumi up, Pulumi stack, Pulumi config. Yeah, Pulumi config looks interesting. This do. Okay, not much. Install, config, up, destroy, preview. So let's do this. Let's, uh, I'm just going to manually create a balloon.dev. YAML. This would be interesting. Um, I wonder if I can specify an AWS profile name. I do want to specify a region. I'm, I'm guessing that maybe if this file didn't exist, when I tr would try to do pulling me up, it would ask me for these things. Just a guess. That's right. Uh, okay, so glowing telegram admin. So um, now this is where I need to go look at the docs. Definitely. Uh, specifically around, hey, Brainless. Good uh, morning. I've just realized that on one of these screens where the, the background is white, you don't see the little uh, thing that says, uh, the little highlight thing for the, the little avatar. Anyway, distracted. How are you doing on this fine Sunday morning? I am looking for how do we import an existing resource? Which I found at some point in the past. I just don't remember. Uh, let's see. Import and post. Import. There we go. Resource option import. Uh, Braylon says doing all right. A bit sad with the clock change as we'll start my work day at 11 a.m. Oh, imagine if I could start my work day at 11. Uh, Zig user, hello, welcome. I haven't tried Pulumi, but Terraform is my jam. I will say I've not had good experiences with Terraform, the little bit that I've used it. Coming from a background of using, um, in the last couple of years, using 
the AWS Cloud Development Kit, which in a lot of ways resembles Pulumi. Um, the ability to like program at like just write code that generates the definition of resources and then and then at that point becomes uh declarative so you have like an imperative style that derives imperative uh derives <laughs> declarative resources and then that's deployed is is really nice to me um and really cuts down on duplication and i've i've seen attempts at you know making more code like Terraform and I was not happy with <laughs> the end result. And uh, yeah, so uh, my my two cents. But uh, yeah, this this is my second stream. So last Sunday's coding stream, I was trying out uh, for the first time Pulumi and local stack. So now I'm coming back to it trying to actually um, deploy to AWS instead of um, instead of local stack. So see how that goes and then brainless says yes i don't like it because i already leave work late now we'll be later fair fair yeah i guess if i started like that that is the the thing it's very nice um you know living on the west coast but kind of working central to eastern uh time zone um, for my for my day job it means that uh, I get done with the er work earlier and then I have you know some time to decompress and uh, have an early dinner and uh, then do the, the the gaming streams in the, in the evening um, that that is kind of I, I'm happy with the times I'm streaming and the times that I'm working and that that's kind of a if if anything were to change, it would just like shift everything around. It would be kind of, kind of disruptive. All right, so uh, I think there were two different ways we could import. Like you can um, code in, like, hey, import this resource. I think is there a way to? Uh, okay, this was not what I found before because there was a. Let me let me go back. Try that search again. I think there was another thing in the docs. Here we go. Adopting Pulumi importing resources. Because I think there were two options for importing resources. There we go. Pulumi imports CLI command, imports the resource into the current illustrated set stack and generates code describing the resources current. See, I don't want to do that. What I was hoping was a way to relate the existing resource to what's in the code already that would be specific to that one stack, aka that one environment. Yeah. So let, let's try this and I'll use the bucket name that um, I set aside in here video archive. Let's see if that works. Okay, so you find the token, uh, the type token and look at property in the import section of the resources API documentation in the Pulumi registry. So in the Pulumi registry, uh, a side note, so there, there are two different AWSs in Pulumi. There's AWS Classic, which is I think what, what I'm using right now. And there's another package, AWS native, which is in public preview, it uses the AWS cloud control API. For new projects, we recommend using AWS native and AWS classic side by side so you can get the speed and correctness benefits. What do you mean by side by side? What does it mean? Huh. Okay. Well, I we're not right now, and I'm. Then maybe somebody can come back to. 
let's take a look at what the docs were saying about looking at package. So that should be an S3 here. Anyway, I just wanted to save some typing. <laughs> All right, so uh, what we want to do, how does this work? So is this part always the same? And this is the part that changes? Okay, so this is the type token. This is the lookup property. Okay. The type of cloud resource to import, either as a type token, the type token for S3 bucket is that thing. The name and value of the properties you use for the resource to lookup. Lookup properties vary by resource. The property used for lookup is bucket. Uh -huh. Okay. So basically the only thing that can vary there is the bucket name. It's the resource name to apply to the resource once it's imported. Okay, so not what they just said. This appears to contradict what this said. Yeah. So what I, what I think I'm supposed to do is if I'm calling the bucket video archive, then where I say bucket here should be video archive, and the actual name of the bucket is uh, save video archive. Now, is this going to work? Well. I don't know, is this, is this configuration right? Um, and will it be used now that I'm on the dev stack? What's gonna happen? So previewing, previewing import. Yeah, so it says it's going to create the stack and it's going to import um, a thing. So let's go over to the Plumy front end. Refresh. There's dev. And we have preview. And it's the same thing the terminal set. Do we see anything in these other tabs? So we see the config. So it did use the profile. It appears to have loaded that config. And hopefully that means it will actually be used. Um, Oh, interesting. So one to create, one to import. Do I want to perform this import? Uh, can I see details? Okay. Now. Yeah, you're in. Let me GT ABS test S3 bucket, bucket video archive provider. Uh, Zig user says this memory leak in my Zig HTTP server is kicking my butt. Can't nail it down. Interesting. I have never used Zig. I think I've seen it talked about like on the Hacker News and other places, but um, in the category of, so my impression is, is that Zig is more of a kind of in the, in the bucket of things that are more systems programming languages. So we're thinking. C, C++, uh, we're thinking um, maybe Go, maybe, isn't that bucket? I, I feel like it It was kind of been, uh, and and what are, what are the other ones? Like, is, is, is it Nim that I'm thinking of, and Zig, and Rust? Um, yeah, anyway. But it's that—that that is one language I'm not super familiar with. 
or go for that matter. <laughs> or, uh, I mean, it's been a long time since I've done any serious uh, C or C++ either, but uh, it's been. Yep, I originally was trying to just see what it was about, and now it's your favorite language. Yeah, that that, that happens. I, I don't know that I would call Rust my favorite language, but it's something that I've been using on this, well, the the actual code for this project that we're now building infrastructure for, um, for the last, you know, eight, nine months. Um, and, you know, I, as a, I, I won't say 100% that Rust would be the best language for doing um, what is essentially a lot of web dev. <laughs> for things but uh it's been fun to use as an opportunity to to get up to speed on it again um and it's not i don't hate it <laughs> typescript is is more of my go-to these days um like in my in my uh day job when i was coding more day to day uh, TypeScript was my main language for the last several years. Before that, it was Python. You built your own HTTP server to be, be nearly identical to ExpressJS. Interesting. Interesting. Oh, that could be... I mean, that can start as a very simple project, right? Where it's just like you, you're parsing, uh, you know, the HTTP... Uh, <laughs> verb and path and the headers and, and all that and that you know you start talking about uh chunked encoding and things like that and um yeah that that can become a very large project all right so what is this doing it looks like it's importing uh things about the s3 bucket i don't know what is hosted zone id why does it exist? And then we see the lifecycle rules. So these are things that I created on the S3 bucket to automatically transition to uh, to Glacier uh, after a period of time to save me money. And uh, okay, sure. So let's import this and see what that does. Okay. So it was imported. What did that actually do? It looks like it told me to please copy the following code into your Pulumi application. Not doing so will cause Pulumi to report that an update will happen on the next update command. Please note the imported resources that are marked as protected. Okay, so uh, you can see it, it did name it video archive, which is what I called it here. Um, but we have a lot of options to match how the S3 bucket is already configured. Right, so hmm. So this is what I didn't want to do. I didn't want to have the resource be explicitly this is the this bucket, right? Because if I want different environments, I want them have to have different S3 buckets. And you can't have multiple S3 buckets with the same name. So this doesn't really do what I was hoping it would do. Maybe. So what does protect true do? Okay, it says that it doesn't auto remove it. Okay. Huh. Is what I want to do just not possible? Like, if, if in one environment I have a predefined S3 bucket and I want to import it for that environment, but in another environment, like in a, um, a testing environment or something like that, I just want to create the S3 bucket to use for testing and not retain it. Sure. I mean, 
mean, this is good. I wouldn't want to accidentally delete the S3 bucket that has uh, <laughs> a year's worth of video footage in it. So you can specify, hey, there's an existing resource out there on AWS related to this thing you're provisioning. It says, okay, well, that already exists. So it gets imported. But again, that's, that's not what I want to do. Because I, the, the, my mental model of how this should work is the code defines infrastructure at any given environment and then uh, maybe that's just not possible you would think it would be right because you, you if you imagine so forget all this import stuff right if I just create the bucket this one stack and one target account in AWS and then I make another stack that targets a different account. Those are gonna be two separate buckets um, that are gonna have different names. And then it's going to know that this resource in Pulumi corresponds to that bucket in account one. And then in a different stack, it corresponds to the other bucket, right? So wherever that state is stored is what I was kind of hoping would get updated. So let's try this. Let's um, let's take all of this, but I'm going to drop maybe the RN in the bucket and see what happens. What is hosted zone ID? This shouldn't. Shouldn't be a thing. Properties. Look at versioning is uh, disabled. Event notifications will eventually be turned on. Um, oh, is that for transfer acceleration? Set the accelerate configuration of an existing bucket. Can be enabled to suspend it. Cannot be used in CA North 1 or in US Gap West 1. This provider will only perform drift detection. Configuration is provided. Use the resource. Uh, bucket acceleration configuration V2 is interesting. Host is zone ID. If I just save this, it's gonna roll with it. I don't know what's gonna what what's gonna do. Uh, let's see. What are what are the commands here? So tell me about preview. What do you think about the current state of affairs, Pulumi? Okay, it thinks it needs to create eight things. We have our Lambda and Roll and State Machine. And then our subscription for events. And the role for the step function and the 
construct overall. Um, I think there's something I need to do here if I want the resources that are being managed by this construct to be nested underneath it. Let's look at that really quick. Kind of a tangent, but um, is it? Not protect. Parent? This? Do that to everything. So what does that look like? So we've not um, we've not created anything in AWS yet, right? So we're just pre previewing um, and leveraging the S3 bucket that was already in place, uh, incorporating that into the stack. Okay, so now I adding parent this to everything. Now all of these resources that are being managed by our component resource are nested inside of it. Um, except for the things that pertain to this uh, bucket, right? Because we're modifying the bucket. That seems good. It doesn't appear to be saying that it's going to modify the bucket, which is good or create it. Um, and I, I assume what the web UI is going to show is going to be the same thing, right? So if I go back to dev, uh, if I look at resources, there's the S3 bucket. Status is protected. Good. Yeah. This, so this is what I'm, what I'm expecting, right? Is that the state of the stack that's managed by below me, it has this identifier um, that relates to what's in the source code and then the attributes that I, that it has that links it to the actual manifested resource are kind of specific to the stack. So we go to updates and we go look at this preview. Aha. What, what is this? Let's take a look. Is there something about the bucket? Maybe just the bucket notification. There's us creating the bucket notification. Permission for the Lambda. Creating the Lambda function. Creating a I am role. Creating a, a bucket event subscription. Creating this step function. And creating an I am role that the step function can use. It doesn't have any permissions right yet, but it's a place for those permissions to go. I'm just trying to understand, like in the summary view, what does this mean for our archive bucket? If plus ACL force destroy minus ARN defaults versioning. I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of nervous about messing with this S3 bucket. Um, Now we have 6.8 terabytes of data in this bucket, in, in Glacier storage anyway. Um, I'm gonna have to add up. So standard infrequent access storage, 1.3 terabytes. Glacier instant retrieval storage, 1.7 terabytes. So that's uh, three terabytes plus Glacier, 6.8 terabytes, so seven. So about 10 terabytes of uh, total data in this S3 bucket. Just a little bit.
178 days of uh, streaming. <laughs> mm, like streaming sessions, I mean, not not like 24 hour days of streaming. Um, so, but I mean, it says right here, unchanged. So um, do I want to believe it? Well, I can just do this. Uh, I mean, I could make another S3 bucket. I could copy things to it and test it out. Um, given the risk here. Hmm. Like, I don't want to make another S3 bucket and copy because that's going to be a lot of costs to do. Um... So things I could do, right? I could restrict the IAM user that we're using here to not be able to delete S3 buckets for this specific S3 bucket. I could uh, make another S3 bucket and replicate the objects over. I could um, create a separate S3 bucket, import that and use that here and test that no, <laughs> that the bucket's not in directly impacted. I feel pretty confident though that this should be safe it's saying it is so i'm just gonna do it and uh i guess i'll pray <laughs> uh it's, again it's, i think the worst thing because the, the resource exists right in our in our thing so it's not gonna get deleted um I guess potentially it could decide it's going to create a different S3 bucket or something like that. But um, I guess the worst thing that could happen is sometime down the road, I try to tear down the stack and it deletes the S3 bucket too. But it says it won't, right? Because it is uh, protected. And set to true, protect ensures this resource cannot be deleted. Sometimes you just gotta accept a little bit of risk. And I think it's not a lot, just a little bit. And uh, let's refresh. Okay. And we didn't get some other random bucket added. And all the objects exist. Yeah. Uh, of course, this doesn't actually have all the videos uh, from everything I I've streamed because I created this bucket in December. And at that point, I had already had to, well, one, I hadn't always locally recorded video. So I didn't always have that. And I hadn't. At some point, I had to just start deleting videos. Um, so I think there there was a little bit of a gap there, but um, I think for yeah, basically the past year because um, I think starting when I started streaming Starfield at the beginning of end of August, beginning of September, that's when I started archiving them to this S3 bucket. So that's that 10 terabytes of data. Uh, and if we look at our dev stack here should see we have resources the graph view there we go so we have our oh, i'll be nice if the 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 region for the graph view is bigger bigger excuse me uh but yeah and we have our our um i keep on wanting to say construct but our our boy uh component resource all the stuff in it and we have our s3 bucket and the things that are hooked up to it and list view also says that and uh everything related to the s3 bucket i guess is now protected from accidental deletion i guess that's fine yeah 
So uh, that should mean that if I were to upload a file to this S3 bucket, uh, I'll just upload, these are all like, these are too big. Let me upload a little file. It's one of these OTIO files temporarily. Uh, so what we should see very quickly before the break, if I go over to step functions, we should see that we have a step function. Yeah, probably should have a description. There's the execution, right? So we can see it was started. Um, we didn't pass any input. So that's that's the thing that we'll need to do. It's pass into the step function. Uh, hey, this S3 object was added. Here's the ARN for where the the object is or the key or something. But yeah, so we have a step function that executes. Uh, yeah, just a few seconds ago, whenever we upload an object to S3, right? So I'm gonna delete that object. Uh, and type delete. And there we go. All right. Ah, uh -huh. okay, so I want to really delete. <laughs> okay, we're gonna take a little break and I'll be back in just a few minutes. Let's get on this a little bit more, there we go. Export. Uh, and so we added some loading stories. Uh, this, this was also something that didn't need to be changed. You know, I'll leave it like that. I think that's actually good in the context of 